Okay, so you buy some rhizomes, stick them in the ground, and build a big old trellis, right? I'm Dan, this is Hops and Gnarly, and in this video, I'll show you everything you need to know to grow hops at home. We'll cover everything from planting to harvesting and beyond, and I'll give you some tips for getting the most out of your hop plants. The first thing you need to know is hops grow in a much different way than most plants in your garden. And if you treat hops like a tomato, for example, you're gonna have a bad time. Tomatoes are more or less annual plants, meaning they're replanted each year from seed. Hops are perennial plants, meaning they can overwinter and regrow each year without replanting. Tomatoes are rooted plants with tap roots that penetrate into the ground as deep as three feet. Hops fall into a different family of plants called rhizomes. While they do have roots, most of what you see under the surface is actually the plant's stem. That stem creates a mostly shallow, ever-expanding network of very fine roots underground to collect water and nutrients, and it sends binds upward to collect energy from the sun. When the plant detects the days are getting shorter, it starts producing hops. Tomatoes aren't so keen to the sun, and they'll produce fruit according to their own life cycle, generally 40 to 50 days after planting. Think about these things like motivations and use them to your advantage. This will change the way you water, the way you fertilize, the way you harvest, and the way you maintain the plants. Every year in early spring, rhizomes start popping up for sale because hop growers around the world are pruning back their plants and they'd rather sell that material to you than throw it in the compost. Remember that these things want to grow mostly shallow and ever expanding, so growers need to prune them back every year. That stem material, or the rhizome, can be planted an inch or two under the surface with the nodes facing up and it will slowly establish itself as its own hop plant. So slowly that I wouldn't expect very many hops to grow in the first year. Instead, it's gonna focus on its underground growth to collect water and nutrients in subsequent years. So if you want hops this year, don't buy rhizomes. Instead, look for field-ready hop plants. Not only will these transplants give you a better chance at harvesting cones in your first year, but they'll also have a much higher survival rate than rhizomes. When choosing a location for planting, make sure you look for full sun or at least partial sun. And definitely do not plant hops facing north. The shallow, ever-expanding network of very fine roots makes hops extremely efficient in gathering nutrients from the soil around them. But, as they grow, their needs are constantly changing. In the spring, a lot of their energy comes from reserves in the roots and the stem. At this point, they don't need very much nitrogen, but they do need some phosphorus for root development and it can be helpful to start building beneficial bacteria in the soil. For those reasons, I'd start with a small amount of something like this 0110 seabird guano and some organic compost, but don't put it directly on top of the plant. Remember, these plants grow mostly shallow and wide, so spread it around the plant to encourage that growth. Once the hops start climbing, they'll need a lot more nutrients, including a bunch of nitrogen. At this point, you can feed them a general purpose fertilizer and a healthy amount of compost. Again, put it around the plant, not on top of it. But when you see hop cones forming, pull back on the nitrogen. From what I understand, lower levels of nitrogen at this point will produce higher concentrations of alpha acids and oils within the cones and lower the risk of pests like hop aphids. If you ask me, watering is the most important thing to consider when growing hops. Instead of wasting time building some elaborate trellis system, invest that time into a watering system. Unlike things like deep-rooted tomatoes that do best with deep, infrequent watering, hops do better with light, frequent watering, especially while they're getting established. Remember, while hops do have roots, most of what you see under the surface is actually the plant's stem. That stem creates a mostly shallow, ever-expanding network of very fine roots underground to collect water and nutrients, and most of that collection happens in the first six inches of soil. 
And I say mostly shallow because some of the very fine roots can penetrate as deep as 15 feet into the ground, especially later in the season. But again, most of the water and nutrient collection happens in the first six inches of soil. I like to water once in the morning before the sun comes up and once in the evening after it goes down. And while you could do this by hand every day, it's much easier to just set up an automated watering system, which can be as simple as a drip line and a timer connected to your outdoor spigot. Whether you've planted rhizomes or found yourself some field-ready crowns, the first sight of new growth is super exciting. These first shoots are called bull shoots, and they have some characteristics that set them apart from the others. The most obvious thing is they tend to have patches of this kind of reddish color. That's not always the case, but when you see it, you know they're bull shoots. They also have super wide internodal spacing, meaning these leaves are super far apart. And if you cut into these, you'd see that they're hollow in the middle. A lot of new hop growers see this growth and immediately start training them to climb. But trust me, a little patience will pay off. Remember, hops send these binds up because they need energy from the sun. And when they detect that the days are getting shorter, they start producing hops. We can use that to our advantage. The days start getting shorter on what's called the summer solstice. Find out when that day is and count 10 weeks back. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, that should fall somewhere in the middle of April. On that day, we're going to trim every single bind off of all of the plants. I know, this seems devastating, but what we're doing is tricking the plant into giving us a good harvest. And don't worry, these binds certainly won't go to waste. Now, without any leaves to catch the sun, these plants are going to work extra hard to send binds upward, and this time they won't be bull shoots. They'll have a more compact structure or shorter internodal spacing, which should lead to more hops per bind. Choose three to four of these binds and encourage them to grow upward on a trellis, the side of a shed, a fence, or something similar. With any luck, they'll hit the top of whatever they're growing on just in time for the summer solstice when they'll concentrate all of their energy into forming cones. All other binds should be pruned. Also, keep in mind that the three to four binds that you choose to keep will also grow side shoots or arms running perpendicular to the bind. Do not prune the arms or you will significantly reduce your harvest. Now, I want to just quickly talk about trellising. To be super clear, you do not need a two-story trellis system to grow hops at home. This is something they do at the commercial level, much like they do for other things like cherry tomatoes, mostly to maximize space and minimize labor costs. That said, it is true that your hops need something to grow on. I like to string mine up on our pergola to provide some shade for our patio, but I see them all around town on the sides of sheds, on fences, and even in trees. And if I was going to install something specifically for the hops, it would be one of these awesome archways. There's a lot of tradition behind hop arches in the garden, and I think they look absolutely magical. But again, Instead of wasting time building some elaborate trellis system, invest that time into a watering system first. Roughly four months after trimming back the bull shoots, it's time to start checking the hops to see if they're ready to harvest. At this stage, if you rip the hop in half, you'll see these bright yellow pockets of resin and oil. That's a good sign. Another thing to look for is some brown leaves near the crown. This might seem like a bad thing, but it tells us that the plant is focusing its energy on the cones and you can just come through here and cut these leaves back as they turn brown. We also want the cones to dry out a bit on the bind. If you take a hop and squeeze it, you should hear a bit of cracking and crumbling, almost like stepping on a pile of dry leaves. When you start hearing that sound, you know it's time to harvest. Keep in mind that this might come at different times for different varieties. 
So if you're growing more than one variety, you might need to harvest them at different times. Here, I'm harvesting from two Chinook plants and I got eight pounds of wet hops in total or about 3.6 kilograms. One of the best things you can do with your homegrown hops is use them right away in a wet hop beer. If you aren't ready for that, or maybe you want to spread those brews throughout the year, the second best option is to freeze them fresh. Fresh frozen hops are gaining popularity for their incredible flavors, aromas, and ease of use, and they're even sometimes commercially available. If you're ambitious, you can even use them to make your own hop concentrates like this bubble hash and live rosin. And if you like to brew sour beer like me, you have to consider aging some hops for later use. Simply throw them into a paper bag or burlap sack, seal it up, and forget about it for a couple years. But that's the only reason I would dry them. The absolute last thing I would do is apply heat to them or artificially force them to dry, as this only degrades the quality of hops that you worked so hard to grow. So don't put them in an oven, don't put them in a dehydrator, and don't dry them with a fan. Once your hops are in the ground, they'll continue to produce for 10 years or more. And like I said at the beginning, most of what you see under the surface is actually the plant's stem. That stem creates a mostly shallow, ever-expanding network of very fine roots underground to collect water and nutrients, and ever-expanding is the key piece there. If you don't want them to expand, you'll need to do some maintenance. Once you've harvested your hops, brush back the top layer of soil and take a look at your rhizome structure. You might be shocked at how busy your plants have been. If they've expanded to places where you don't want them, simply cut back the rhizome and don't be afraid to be pretty aggressive here. Remember, anything you cut from the rhizome has the potential to become another plant in either your garden or someone else's. The last thing I want to mention is a few troubleshooting tips. Like all plants in the garden, your hops are likely to attract a few types of bugs. A few bugs here and there is totally normal, but one to watch out for is the hop aphid. These tiny little devils can be devastating to hop plants, so if you notice them, take action right away. You could, of course, try to spray them with some insecticide, but the hop cones tend to give them a bit of shelter and end up protecting them from the chemicals. Instead, I'd recommend introducing a predator like ladybugs to keep the aphids in check. These can be bought online, and as long as you time the conditions right, they'll stick around as long as there are aphids to eat. Another possibility is downy mildew, which presents as white, yellow, or brown discoloration on the leaves. This is a really common issue in the garden that spreads really quickly, so I recommend carefully removing discolored leaves as you see them and be careful not to touch other leaves with the infected leaves. The most common issue I see is slow growth and small harvest, which can be caused by a number of factors. First, are you growing in containers or in the ground? While you can technically grow hops in containers, they'll do much, much better in the ground. Remember that rhizome network wants to grow mostly shallow and wide. Limiting that growth to even a 10 or 20 gallon pot will significantly stunt the growth of your hops. And second, are you using the right watering schedule? If you ask me, watering is the most important thing to consider when growing hops. I like to water once in the morning before the sun comes up and once in the evening after it goes down. And while you could do this by hand every day, it's much easier to just set up an automated watering system which can be as simple as a drip line and a timer connected to your outdoor spigot. With that, we've come to the end of this video, and I really hope it helps you grow happy and healthy hop plants at home. My name's Dan, this is Hops and Gnarly, thanks for hanging out with me today, I'll see you again soon.